Firefly is such a, a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. and everyone wants it to come back. Do you ever get tired of people saying, oh, come on, please, bring it back, bring it back? I don't get tired of it. I feel uh, sad that I'm not able to say, yes, we're doing it. Do you know who I have here today? Who do you have here today? Only Adam Baldwin, that's all. <laughs> And Adam, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Stan. Okay. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks. Now, Cheers. Cheers. And Jenna, a toast. Slush <laughs> out. Here we go. Chendan. Eat your hearts out, you out there who are thirsty. We're having a great time. <laughs> so tell me, have you ever wanted to play a superhero? I, I would like to avoid the tights at this time. Being a, <laughs> being a uh, 50 year old, I'd like to get away from the whole like uh, tights and things. Well, you don't always need tights as a superhero. That's I mean, true. Look at Iron Man. No tights, just just a heavy goddamn suit of iron armor. <laughs> you got a point there. How about a super villain? I could go for a super. Would you, would you, you like to do? You could be a good Doctor Doom. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. And um, would you rather be a villain than a hero? I think playing a villain gives you an opportunity to really chew the furniture, and I like to chew the furniture. The characters that I grew up watching were uh, westerns, uh, Eli Wallachs and Jason oh, yeah. Robards, and yeah. those are the kind see, of characters that I really admire and want to like, ah, just chew the See, that's stuff. the difference between us. I liked Errol Flynn and John Wayne. I like the good guys, and who do you get me as a Villains, guess? hey, a I appreciate A guy who leads into the bad guys. I would play a super villain. I like the good guys too, you know, the Dirty Harrys of the world. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's, he's one of my, Clint Eastwood yeah. to me can do no wrong. Well, I want to talk about Comic-Con because all of us were down there. Mm -hmm. So what nerdy thing did you buy? I didn't buy anything this time. No. I didn't, I didn't either between you and me. Yeah, no. it's, it's, Comic-Con is a, mm, it's a very crowded affair and it's tough to get in there and, and really dig deep on some of the other conventions you can go to. They're a little more intimate and you can actually buy stuff. I think that's the one word you'd never use for Comic-Con, intimate. <laughs> intimate. It is a mad panic. You can't make your way through the hall without bumping into people. Although I will say this, this particular Comic-Con was special. It was the 10th anniversary of Firefly, and we got together, and uh, there were intimate moments behind the scenes. Oh, tell us about it. Oh, yeah, we want to hear about the intimate moments. The job, well. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to you. Uh-huh. It was kissing oh. uh, and hugging. <laughs> we were able to ha have this wonderful, panel, 6,000 people, tears were shed, we expressed our love, and that's the most important thing for me whenever I go to these conventions is to share the love between the fans and, and, and the cast that we worked with. It was a family atmosphere, and it's something that we, we all created together, and that's the way I look at it whenever I go to these panels, is we created this together. And you know something, those fans are the greatest people in the world. They enjoy what you do, they enjoy the stories you're telling, they enjoy the way you act it, and basically you're bringing enjoyment and entertainment into their life. I, I'm curious, and I've wanted to ask you this for a while, do you ever get tired of people, because Firefly is such a, a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. and everyone wants it to come back, do you ever get tired of people saying, oh, come on, please, bring it back, bring it back? I don't get tired of it, I feel, uh sad that I'm not able to say, yes, we're doing it. We brought this up at the panel with Joss, and Joss said, you know, it's kind of like Camelot. It sits there, and it's this beautiful thing. It's this beautiful, shining city on a hill, if you will, that you are reticent to go back and maybe diminish. You don't want to diminish it. It sits there, and maybe it's just best that we had that for the time that we had it, and it's a beautiful thing, and onward we go. I want to know um, difference in directing style between Stanley Kubrick and Joss Whedon. You want me to toot my own horn now, huh? Uh -huh. I'm the only living individual to have worked with both Stanley and, that is something and to Joss say. Whedon. That is something to say. Actor anyway, uh, that I know of. Tell us about the difference between them, mm. if there is any. Well, Stanley, I worked with him on, not Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. I worked with him in 85, 86 on Full Metal Jacket. He was very focused. We were, uh, we were at the mercy of English weather, and in that time, there were moments where we really loved each other, and there were moments where he would get a little cranky with us. Whereas Joss, we didn't have as much time because we were working on a television show, but we had at least a half a year to get to know each other uh, on, on those 14 episodes of Firefly and then the movie later. And we've all remained friends since, but Joss, his attention to detail and the words, the words are so very crucial to Joss. His writing is so beautiful and, and, and clear and fun. 
This makes it fun. They're, they're not dissimilar in, in their attention to detail, but Joss is much younger and better looking. <laughs> Adam. It's great Stan, to have you here. thank you for having me. Really appreciate Oh, really? I, I, the only so thing, much. if we could only have gotten you to open up and talk a little more, but I can understand some actors are shy. They, no. uh, you know, yeah. you have to prod <laughs> them to get a word out of them. Next <laughs> time we'll talk about my childhood. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, hey, great scene. Salud. Thanks for coming. God bless. Excelsior.